Yeah, we're live, and I'm going to cut the intro short because of uh, all the technical difficulties I had getting on today. Uh, when you go live, it really is live. Anything can happen. Uh, lights can go out. Sound can go out. Microphone can go out. But it looks like everything is good right now, and uh, level's coming in strong. So uh, how you guys doing? Hopefully all this stuff here works, and you know I can really check, see, you know, Boom, yeah, that's me. I'm Barry Cunningham. I am a local real estate investor and burgeoning real estate developer here in South Florida. Uh, been around for a while, but looking forward to being back. And it's an absolute great time to be back in the real estate market. So I'm going to tell you about a deal that I looked at today that, you know, jumped out at me. And it's something I'm going to pursue. It might be just one killer deal. And no, I'm not going to give you the address because then you know what would happen. Well, yeah, you, I know what you try to do. But anyway, I digress. So what I'm going to do first, because of the craziness and the insanity that's going on, I understand that we're talking about maybe even as going as far as reinstituting a lockdown. It, it's absolutely nuts. Just, just absolutely crazy. And then on top of that, or before that, I guess tomorrow, the Palm Beach County commissioners are talking about making masks mandatory again. <sighs> Craziness. And again, in Broward and Dade, I think they're already there. They're going to require masks everywhere. Uh, this stuff is crazy. But all I want to do is talk about how it impacts the real estate market, which it certainly is impacting the real estate market. Absolutely impacting the real estate market which means it's an unbelievable time to make some money in real estate so let's go to the board first and uh, take a look at things and right first i'm going to go to the covid information on uh, department of health and we're going to look up you know what today's data is because everybody's going crazy and they're not really giving you the right information and uh you know, that's what you come here for because I'm going to give the straight scoop. I get so many emails and texts from people, especially from up north, family members, potential investors who want to park some money down here. And I tell them, don't believe the hype. Don't even believe the county commissioners. Go directly to the source. And you tell me if we need to be panicking because I'm going to give you exact data. And like I've said before, if you're one of those people who's a conspiracy theorist and you think that everyone's lying to you, I can't help you, go ahead and just log off right now. I don't have time for that. I want to talk to people who want to talk about data. I even have friends who tell me, hey, you don't even understand. This is nuts. No, it's not. It's not nuts. So let's talk about it. As of today, and again, I will refresh. And when I refresh, the numbers are in front of me. Numbers are, and you can see here up in your upper right, um, hopefully you can see that it's right above my head, right there. Um, the upper right, this is the number of new cases per day. Number of new cases per day. And I'm trying to tell people, stop focusing on cases. Everybody is testing. Everybody, and I don't know who's testing. I see everybody running around with a wand and you know zapping people's heads. I walked into a restaurant on Saturday, and they're like, "Hey, let me go ahead and zap your head." So, what the hell does that mean? But these people turn into epidemiologists overnight. That everyone's walking around with a temperature gun, trying to decide you know whether or not you should come in someplace. But anyway. Um, Here's the numbers, the exact numbers. So, yes, it spiked like hell the last couple of days. All the way up to on uh, June 20th, 4,700 4, people were tested positive for the COVID. Then we had a dr big drop off yesterday. I haven't seen today's numbers yet, but it's uh, 2.8, which is, you know, in line where it was on the 15th. So it spiked, it went down, who knows, today may go back up. I've heard different stories on the radio. But let me move my big head. This lower right is the number I look at, and I think that's what you should be looking at, is deaths. And see this little sliver down here? So yesterday we had uh, five people die in the whole state five 
Nobody talks about that. Once again, I keep telling you, they're, they're trying to scare everybody with these numbers of three and 4,000 people a day coming down with the COVID, but nobody wants to talk about the actual deaths. Why is that? Why, why, do, why do people not want to talk about the deaths? And then, you know, I've also got people, friends of mine, who, who keep saying, hey, well, Barry, this thing has a 10 to 14 day incubation period. Okay, so that means back here on today, since today is the 22nd, um, we should probably be able to go in here and look at like uh, the 11th, and that's, uh, you know, 11 days ago, and it was 1.6 thousand or 1,600 people were infected, but the deaths are dropping off the table. The deaths aren't keeping pace with the uptick in cases. Everybody wants to talk about cases. Nobody wants to talk about the actual death rate, which is dropping off the table. So the other number I look at always is this here, this number here in the lower left. This number here in the lower left is the overall percent positive, which is 6.2%. And I love seeing that number that brings it down even lower. Uh, what they never tell you is 1.5 million people who have been tested have tested negative. All you hear is people screaming about more cases, cases, cases. This is all they want to talk about. There's a reason why they want you to talk about that. It's fear porn. It's keeping people locked in their houses and afraid to, to even go out. My wife's birthday was last night. We had a wonderful dinner at a great French restaurant here in Boca. Um, restaurant was crowded. There were people eating dinner. The staff had masks on, as we know they, they're supposed to. Dinner was fantastic. People were having a good time. Nobody had a mask on in the restaurant. Uh, on Saturday, we were in Fort Lauderdale. We went out to lunch uh, to an old friend's restaurant who has a, a Chinese or rather, a, I guess, Chinese Japanese buffet restaurant with sushi and all the good stuff like that. And um, he's like, I don't know if I'm going to make it, Barry. Yeah, we're trying to hold on. And, and that's the difference between Broward and Dade. Uh, I mean, Broward and Palm Beach. And then, of course, you're talking about a sushi buffet versus a high-end French restaurant where the people up here in Boca were able to sustain whatever losses and come back. So all of this is driven by fear porn. It's all driven by, by some people who have an agenda, an agenda to you know impact business, impact life, keep people frozen as sheep. But I'm not playing that game. I'm looking at buying property. I'm going to get into this property that I looked at uh, today and started running numbers on, got the team looking at it, shipped it down to the attorney. Hey, listen, run the background numbers on this. This looks like a huge winner. This looks like something we need to get into because the, basically the people who own this property uh, have said, we're done. Actually, when you look at the property, they've been done for a while. So let me get into that first, or no, let me get into some of the data first. So what's going on with the market? One of the things that you have to know in terms of real estate, and it's another thing that you don't hear a lot of people talking about. Now, <laughs> being a real estate investor for 20 plus years, 27 plus years, and understanding all the different nuances of markets, there's one that I really take a look at. And right now during the COVID, I'm really taking a look at it. And so if you haven't understood this, if you're in real estate, whether you're an agent, investor, or whatever, this term here is called the absorption rate. And a lot of people talk about comps and you know things like that. This is what really changes the way things are done here. Um, and it, you have to understand these numbers. So let me let me just tell you what an, an absorption rate is. An absorption absorption rate determines whether you're into a potentially a buyer's market or you're in a seller's market. So look at this right here. Traditionally, an absorption rate above 20% has signaled a seller's market in which homes are sold quickly. An absorption rate below 15% is an indicator of a buyer's market in which homes are not being sold fast. So the way you get 
to figure out an absorption rate is you basically have to take the number of sales divided by the number of properties in inventory and it's going to give you a percentage and that percentage when sellers are calling the shots is going to be at 20 percent and above when buyers begin calling the shots <clears throat> excuse me that number is going to be at 15 percent or below so keep that in your mind 20 percent and above sellers market 15% and falling buyer's market. So what does that mean, Barry? <clears throat> it means as a buyer, I'm walking in knowing, hey, listen, Mr. Seller, I know you've got this property, but your value may drop precipitously, or you may end up waiting a long time because there's more property on the market. So you want to do a deal. And also we're in this COVID thing here, so you may really want to do a deal. So to illustrate that, here's numbers from the Miami Board of Realtors. I'm going to blow this up and hopefully you can see this. From the Miami Board of Realtors for March. And it breaks it down to um, Miami, Broward, Palm Beach, Martin, and St. Lucie counties here in South Florida. Um, basically, this goes from south to north or from north to south, depending on how you read. So in March of 2020 there were 1100 closed sales i wish i can blow this up further so you guys could really see this let me see what i can get to okay 1100 closed sales 17 percent of those people went ahead and paid cash for their property um, and then you get down here to, to this to some of the nitty-gritty numbers uh, median time to contract. So a house had to sit for 52 days, almost two months before they could even get to a contract. It would take you 94 days to even get to a close. So you have to understand the difference there. Contract, then close. So that's telling me almost a month and a half after a property goes to contract, were they even closing? There were 6,200 properties on the market which gave you five and a half months of supply. So if you went ahead and said, okay, there's 1100 and you can see this calculator, let me move it over here. Yeah, so if you do 1100 and you divide that by 6216, you get an absorption rate of 17 and a half percent. So we're already showing that, hey, listen, we're not over 20, we're not quite 15, we're in that no man's land where you know wonder what's going to happen in the upcoming months this was in march then we went ahead and we looked at what's happened in april and in april we're looking at these numbers and look at the difference in the number of sales here in march 1100 april 865 but look at the inventory down here still 6076 now don't want to drive your nuts with math here but you take that same 865 and you divide that by 6076 what do you got you got 14.2 percent now remember what a buyer's market is a buyer's market is anything below 15 percent i just showed you with the, the calculator here where am i uh do, do, do. We're at 14.2% in April. You see where the numbers are going? Are you understanding what I'm saying? So from March to April, we saw a 3% shift in the absorption rate and 3% down, meaning it's, it's actually now is into a buyer's market in Dade County. 14.2 is below that 15 level. So now let's go ahead and look at May, the most recent numbers that came out this morning, and it's dropped off the cliff. We're going to look at the same thing here. Um, we're going to go ahead and clear this. We're going to do, where is it? 734 divided by 56.65. And now we're at 12.5. 9%. 12.9%. That's 
way into buyer's market territory. Kind of hard. Actually, it's very hard to, <laughs> just like with the Corona stuff, it's hard to argue with data. The data now tells us we are in a buyer's market, which means those of us who are actually buying property to look to resell are in a much stronger position on single family houses. Now, look over here. It dropped 45% year over year. That's a huge drop. These are numbers that you know should actually scare people to death. 45% uh, from May 19th to May 20th. Those are huge numbers. And I'm not even gonna get into the condo market. Condo market, um, the sales numbers have dropped 61%. 61%, 61%. I'm just gonna say that again. Condo market's falling off the table. The absorption right there, I, I don't even need to calculate it. Um, Cause when you see numbers like this, 560 sales, and you've got 14,000 properties in inventory, you pretty much have your pick of condos and townhomes anywhere in South Florida. Now, I'm not normally a condo and townhouse buyer. Um, I'll look at some high-end stuff because people coming down from New York, people who are trying to escape the, you know, the, the craziness that's going on up there, they're used to, you know, being involved in and living in apartment life and they're looking for stuff because they just can't take this anymore. They can't take the insanity and the lawlessness that's just going crazy up there. So I try to show them these numbers right here. This is the kind of stuff that I show investors and people who are looking to park money that when you look at these numbers, it makes absolute sense to jump in right now and get involved in real estate because the market has completely shifted. When we're looking at absorption rates of 12, and as you saw, I started it, it was at 17, then it went to 14, then it went to 12, and now people are screaming about the corona happening again. If this thing gets into the tens, if, if, if we're looking at anywhere between nine and a half and 10 and a half percent, we're talking gold rush. We are talking absolute gold rush. If July, if, if if in July, June's numbers come out and say we're at that nine and a half to ten percent in terms of the absorption rate, now is the time you need to get your private investors in place because money is going to just own the market. You're going to be able to just come in with a cash offer and say, "I'll take that one," and I'll take that one. Oh, you don't want my price? Be gone. Sit around for, you know, what's it down here now? Uh, median time to sell, uh, 90 days, 100, 100 days. So right now we're in June. Um, let's go ahead and give me a call back in September uh, when this thing sells. And that's, that's if the property is in good condition. That's if a property is in condition where someone actually wants to move in. What if these properties down here that have been somewhat neglected end up hitting the market because people have to get rid of them? What happens when the courts reopen and foreclosures just start flooding the market? Well, I'll tell you what happens. That absorption rate goes down and pricing goes down. Both of those two things are, are what you need to look for, especially in the next probably 30 days. And, and I'm forecasting that when you see stuff like this, when you see a 45% drop in the amount of sales uh, in May, and last month it was 31%, uh, it's dropping. People don't understand. this. That, read the data. It's just like the COVID. A lot of people put their, you know, do the three monkey thing. They don't want to hear. They don't want to say. They don't want to look because the data tells them you're in trouble. So let me digress. So today I went out and looked at a property and uh, like I said, I'm not gonna tell you the address, but let, let's take a look at this property here. Um, it's, believe it or not, this property is in Boca. It's actually in East Boca. And let me, let me go ahead and pause that. So 
This is the lovely pool of this home here in East Boca. I don't know if there's an alligator, swamp thing. I don't know what's in there, but I'm not getting in there. Nobody else is getting in there. Um, I couldn't believe when I, you know, I saw this property today. Um, nice kidney stone shaped pool. Um, the trees have decided to take it over and the greenness tells me there's probably something in there. I don't know what, but I look at these properties and a lot of people who look at these properties go, ew. And I love that because when I hear ew, yeah, that means money. That means money. Anytime you walk into a property and other people go ooh, that's when it's money time, especially in a neighborhood like Boca. You know what the price price, price of homes is are here in Boca. Mm -hmm. You know the kind of buyers that want to live in Boca. You know anyone who wants a home with a green pool? You know anybody who, who, who wants to live in there? Oh, look at this. And everything about this house is rot. Um, I couldn't believe it. You're going to see some pictures here. Um, just everything. And what's that mean? That means the roof is bad. That means it needs a roof because everything here um, has has been corroded. There's junk everywhere. There's probably rats. When I was out front of the house today, the next door neighbor saw me taking pictures and she came out she said please buy this house she goes it's it's just an eyesore for one but at night I can just hear the animals running through this property and I mean you can just see this this is just disgusting that's the interior of the living room or whatever kennel you got an open hole here who knows what's coming out of there um, that's a kitchen Um, four people and even more roof damage and it just goes on from there when you're seeing a property that's in this kind of condition yet it's in a neighborhood uh, like whew, just burn that bed burn it crazy just more damage more damage all over the place uh, this is a bedroom just left empty unattended there's nobody living in this house you know, there's still toilet paper on the counter uh, and they left out and more damage and more damage and more damage uh, to the point where this this house is toast I'm gonna lean in here what do you think about that property well let me give you some numbers the neighborhood where that house is located is about a 400 and in between 425 and 450 are what the homes are selling for in that neighborhood 425 to 450 the bank is owed two hundred and seventy five thousand dollars on this particular property you think the bank's gonna want to take this thing back the way it looks or do you think the bank may say hey listen Get this off our books. It's a non-performing asset. We can't sell it because we can't even foreclose because the courts are closed. So my offer is going to be for $197,000 on a property that's worth after it's repaired in a neighborhood of $425,000 to $450,000. It's a full gut. We're going to have to go in and just take everything out of the property and start like it's fresh the only thing good about this property it's a concrete block con con yeah, concrete brick property so the bones are good but other than that we're going to tear everything down to the studs and build it back new flooring new kitchen new walls new electrical everything new new landscaping new driveway get it it's, it does have a uh we call it circular driveway so we can put some nice pavers in it this property is going to look like the other properties in the neighborhood and it's going to fetch top dollar because everything in it is going to be new. This is the proverbial. If you're involved in real estate investing, this is something you have to remember. Find the worst house in the best neighborhood. Don't find the best house because it's, it's probably not going to be something you can make money on. But this is a property that is obviously the worst house in the the best neighborhood so the people 
all the way down the street, both sides of the street, nice manicured lawns, everything looking fine, and then you walk up and see this thing, which has been vacant for over a year. The lady got sick, husband died, uh, and the property has just gone to bleh. That's how you make money. People say, I don't know how to make money in real estate. You got to mine for the data. You have to look at the data that's being presented. You have to go through all of this. Know your numbers. Know what th where things are headed. This is Broward County. Um, just go through here and, and find out what, what do the numbers look like. If you're in Palm Beach, what do your numbers look like? What's your absorption rate? How can you negotiate when you don't know your numbers? When I can put this in a package to somebody and say, hey, listen, this property is already sat for a year. It's got animals, everything else. Hey, you want to come in? I'll, I'll show you. Come on, come on in. Well, well, hey, don't jump because there might be a snake or something. Boy, I'm telling you, they can't wait to get out of there. They're signing whatever they can sign to get this property to you. I'm going to actually ask the owner, just deed it to me. Just go ahead and give me the deed. You don't want it. You you already you've been gone for a year. You're not going to make any money on it. The only thing you have to be, you know, worried about, which we're going to protect them, is to make sure they don't get any form of deficiency judgment. But what do you think banks are doing right now? When banks are seeing these same numbers, when banks look at this stuff, and they see properties you know, going down 47 percent uh, in a year, what do you think they want to do? You think they want to sit on a non-performing asset, or they want to recover? some money they're not really going to lose anything the actual loan on this property was 175 uh and the principal hasn't been paid so it's at like it, or the interest so that's like fifty thousand dollars in interest so it's their their judgment is higher but they're not going to lose anything they've already <laughs> written this money off so now it's a matter of someone like me coming in going i'll take this asset completely unemotional and we're going to do a deal here and we're going to fix this property. Uh, I already talked to the city, code violations, liens. We'll take care of all that. Just make sure this woman doesn't get any form of a deficiency judgment and just give me a satisfaction. Uh, and we're going to go ahead and close this property and get it off your books. That's how it's done. So I figure it may even cost us as much as seventy-five to $100,000 to fix it up. So if I can get it at 197, I'm going to be into it fixed up at 297, and we're selling it for 425. And if, even if we discount it down to four, that's a hundred thousand dollar profit. That's why you love real estate. That's why you love real estate in these times. The time to buy is when blood is running through the streets, as Rothschild said, as Warren Buffett said. Be greedy when others are fearful. And right now, everybody's terrified. This is the time to get in. So if you're interested in finding out what we have to offer, if you're looking to park some money and looking for a great return in a small amount of time where you can amortize out over a period of year, probably get like a 30 or 40% return, or just want to get in and make 14 to 16% on your money in like 90 days, you go ahead and leave me a direct message. We'll get back to you and we'll, t we'll talk. But these are the kind of deals that we find, and we're, we're finding them everywhere. You know, I just started going through and doing my data mining and doing numbers. It's all numbers. That's all it is. And uh, it works. So $100,000 plus on this one property, yeah, I'm, I'm all about that. That's talking about doing a deal, making sure everyone's happy, the homeowner's happy, the bank's happy, the neighbors are happy, the city is happy. And I'm damn sure going to be happy. So, sorry for the delay today um, with all the technical stuff. I'm going to have to begin probably doing some recording earlier uh, to make sure that all the levels are working. But this is about to be a really fun time in South Florida real estate. And I'd love for you to take the ride and just keep watching and keep learning and again if you're looking to park some money if you're looking to come down from new york go ahead and leave me a message i'd love to get a hold of you i mentioned in a show last week that i didn't have a crystal ball and no real estate agent no broker had a crystal ball but when you've got data like this you don't need a crystal ball that is your crystal ball 
that is looking at the numbers and determining where things are. And they may slide further. I mean, it, it, it may be something that if the bank hems and haws about my, my offer of 197, I may turn around and say, listen, I need to get a cushion here. I don't know what's going to be happening with this COVID. I don't know what's going to be happening with the election. Uh, I may need to come in at 175. So the longer you wait, you're basically getting the risk. The quicker you move, you're putting the risk on me to make sure I get this thing done and sold and off my back and off my investors back quickly. That's how you negotiate. That's how you put together the numbers and then you've got your own crystal ball. That's that's it guys. That's that's how you do it. So check out these stats on your own uh, and uh, let me know what you think. Sorry again for the delay today, but I hope this was worth it and hope you enjoyed it. Talk to you tomorrow.